Thinking about like when it comes to the idea of the church, you know, kids who have like grown up with their family identities being very much in the church and then like going away to college or going away somewhere and like that all falling away. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing to understand at that age, at like 18 of like, oh, now I have to figure out my own personal identity and my own personal relationship with the church or how I want to be in community with other people. I have a lot of gratitude for that, for that moment and for where I ended up in like, because I was able to experience from that point a lot of different, so many different expressions of, of faith and yeah. community. Highlights of that being dinner that happened every week that was based on the teachings and the practices of the Iona community in oh, Scotland. Yeah, yeah. You know, a Puerto Rican kid from Kentucky, like being able to experience that was so powerful for me, just like getting together over like food and fellowship and talking about, you know, poems and scripture and welcoming the stranger and all of those things was amazing. After college, I graduated and went to Costa Rica and spent two years teaching at a Quaker school. The Quaker community. Oh wow, community. so such another, another like amazing. Yes, I'm experiencing Quaker meeting, understanding the necessity and importance of silence and michelle j rodriguez's life totally which is one that doesn't necessarily uh, that doesn't seem like an organic experience <laughs> it's, not, it's not at all it's not at all but especially now kind of coming back into like you know the hustle bustle of a city like those two particular faith experiences have just like kind of crept into my day-to-day -day more than more than a lot of other traditions Sweet. so it's just neat to to like look back and be like, I've like been on a journey. It's gonna keep going. I think in creative community, there can be a lot of like erasure of someone's past in the church mm. because it's de-intellectualized. Totally, unless you, you talk about it as a like ridiculous, like. <laughs> punchline right exactly or like oh let me tell you this crazy story of what happened to me or whatever but regardless of people's current relationships to that it's so formative and so um so deeply ingrained in the you know in the stories that you have to tell so i hope that there's more space given to that and specifically that amplifies like women of color and people of color and their experiences because in those communities like that's uh, so much more like normal and celebrated and okay and cool and fine to be like, oh yeah, this is a big part of who I am. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to other spaces and like, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and say like a lot of like predominantly white spaces where it's like, we are liberal, open people, as long as it's things that we agree with or things that we understand right. or things that we can qualify or quantify. So, um, so my hope is that that will change. How do you see that dialogue moving forward? Like, what do you, what are like some like, here's how we make that a safe space for these conversations? Wow. It's a painful time. It's a painful time in history. What time isn't a painful time, right? In those incredibly painful moments there's like the opportunity for dialogues that are difficult mm -hmm. to begin and necessary for people to have what would happen if like church communities were coming together to be like hey this is hard and weird but let's do this let's talk let's be neighbors mm -hmm. let's like be neighbors actually way will open you know and is opening and is opening and is opening and is opening, and is opening.